Hello and welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. Behind me is the Bunnerhaben distillery and we are at the northeast end of Isla. It's very remote here and the distillery was established in 1881, which is a long time ago. And just recently in 2011, the distillery changed its product, products to products that are non-chill filtered and are not colored. Um, that's what we're going to find out how the Buna Heaven is made today. This here is the malt mill. It's a Prometheus malt mill from Leeds. Very old one. It's still running very well. And Buna Heaven has only a few peated whiskies. So most of the time in the year they run with unpeated malts. And during four weeks of the year they run with peated malt and they switch their whole production to peated malt and the whole distillery then smells differently. So um, in 1960 the distillery changed from the blend industry which was very popular back in the days to the more sophisticated more premium single malt whiskey they produce today. Behind me is the huge mash tun of Bunner Heaven. It's from the 1960s when they changed their equipment and their style from blend to single malt. Uh, down it's steel and on top you have a copper lid so you don't waste too much energy. And uh, it takes about 15,000 kilograms to fill up the mash tun. So um, you have four washings which two of them will uh, recycle the water so the last two runs the water doesn't contain that much sugar and starch, so they use it for the first washing to get a really good wash with much sugar for the fermentation. I'm here at the wash bags of Bunner Heaven. Bunner Heaven has six wash bags. They're all made of Oregon pine and have a capacity of 100,000 liters. 66,000 liters are filled with the wort, and then you add a bit of yeast and water. Um, to liquefy the yeast and then the rest of the wash bag is empty so the foam can fill out, uh, form and it's then crushed by these turning blades so the, the wash bag doesn't um, boil over. Um, after 68 hours um, we have a ready-made wash with about 7% alcohol. This is very long and then afterwards it is used for the distillation. Behind me are the stills of Buna Heaven. Um, Buna Heaven has a two wash stills with a capacity, both have the capacity of 35,300 liters. Um, one wash bag has 66,000 liters wash and they divide it up into the two wash stills. But if you would divide them up into the two wash stills, the wash stills would be nearly full. So they take about half of the wash, fill it into the stills, so the wash still doesn't boil over. Um, they're very pear shaped and pretty big in size. That's quite unusual and makes the Bunner Heaven unique. Um, the spirit still is a bit smaller. They have a capacity of 15,500 liters. And they're also really pear shaped and tall. And don't be fooled by this brown look. Um, it is copper, but Buna Heaven chooses not to polish their stills. So um, still the copper is a, has a catalytic reaction and that's what makes the whiskey so smooth and drinkable that we know it. After the spirit has been distilled, you dilute it down to barreling strength. And this building is here to fill these, uh, the spirit into the barrels. The barrels are rolled onto these skis here. Then you plug in the filler and the filler automatically fills up the cask. Then you bung it, roll it to the other side and it's off to the warehouse. Occasionally you have a, a cask that may have some leakage. So the people repair it here on site that we don't have too much uh, spirit loss during the maturation. I'm in one of the newest warehouses of Buna Heaven. And if you look around them, these sites look a bit familiar. And that's because this used to be the malting floors. And Buna Heaven has um, yeah, enforced all the, the pillars with new beams. 
and made it stronger so they can use the floors again as warehouses. And if you look around, this is a new warehouse, all the spirits are about two years old, and you see a lot of sherry casks, and that's a great lookout for the, the bottlings to come because we have a lot of great sherry casks coming straight from, uh, straight from Spain. And yeah, Bunnehaven has about 24,000 casks on site in nine warehouses. So I'm here with David Brody and your tour guide here and you can answer me some question about the distilleries. I hopefully can, yes. First of all, thank you for having us here. Pleasure. Um, so what are we having today? We'll be tasting some of our core range. Uh, we'll be trying first of all our 12 year old, um, which will be known far and wide I would hope to most of your audience. We'll follow that up with a taste of our 18 year old. Mm -hmm. um, it's along similar veins to the 12 year old. Take it on a little bit further, we'll move on to our peated range. Mm -hmm. Initially with uh, one of the, the, the first whiskies in our peated range, which is the Tochuch. And we'll be finishing off with the most recent addition to our peated range, which is the Kiobanach. Hard to pronounce, but hopefully good. Yeah, let's dive right in with the, with the 12. Certainly. Mm. Now the 12 year old is probably the whiskey that will be best known to anybody who knows about a Haven distillery. Officially, an unpeated whiskey. Although, if you get scientific, it's maybe half a part to two parts per million in the peating level. Oh, okay. Uh, Strength-wise, 46.3% proof. And uh, it's a combination of bourbon cask and sherry cask whiskey. We're you just, just changed recently to unchill filtered and uncoloured. About three or four years ago, yeah, mm -hmm. we, we took a decision that chill filtering was going to be a thing of the past for Bunahaven whiskey. So, you'll never see a little bit of caramel in a glass ever again coming from us. Um, as a result of taking away the chill filtering process, it was necessary to increase the strength of our whiskey slightly. So you'll no longer see a whiskey any less than 46% proof coming out of one of them. And this one sits at 46.3%. As I say, 75% bourbon cask whiskey, 25% sherry cask whiskey. So you're getting those lovely dark colours coming through from the sherry cask. Mm -hmm. And on the flavour, uh, yeah, you're going to get your typical bourbon cask notes, you're going to get your, your oaky vanillas, your, your citrus fruits, but you're going to get the darker, sweeter notes of the sherry cask whisky coming through as well. A beautiful, beautiful whisky. Yeah, sweetness. I got a bit of a citric, maybe in some. Yeah, with some lemon, but also sweetness. A bit of a, that bourbon style, a little vanilla, a little caramel. Mm. Very light. Mm -hmm. Very easy drinking. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't, wouldn't have expected that from that kind of still, but mm -hmm. very light and gentle. Okay. So a wonderful whiskey for introducing people mm -hmm. to malt whiskey. Yeah, it's it's a bit unusual for Isla whiskey. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but I like it. I really like it. So there's one question that uh, I found up early when I planned the tour. I was looking at the map and I saw Bunahaven Distillery and Bunahaven Bay, and they spelled spelled differently. Is there a reason behind that? The reason behind that is a little bit historic. It rates it. it Harks right back to the days when the maps were first printed by the Ordnance Survey Company mm -hmm. and they printed the spelling of Bonahaven with the two N's at the end. However, our name is most certainly Bonahaven with only one N at the end. And despite arguing with the Ordnance Survey Company, they've never changed it. So they spell it with one N? Uh, two N's and you spell it with one N. Correct, yes. <laughs> so it's a um, spelling mistake. Well, it's, by, uh... it's, it's our village, so uh, we should know how to spell it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so 18-year-old. Um, 18-year-old, yeah. 18-year-old is, a, is a, a natural progression. It's the next part of our core cool range of, 
Find Peter Twiskis. Oh, that's dark. And it's... I describe it as being the same as the 12, only more. Because you've got the advantage of those extra years of maturation, taking us up to the 18 year old. But the mm -hmm. percentage has changed slightly. Oh. We are now talking 60% bourbon cask and 40% sherry cask whiskey. Mm. So you're getting even darker colours mm -hmm. and an even bigger influence from the sherry cask. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's more with um I would say grapey fruit. Mm -hmm. You really go you really see the the, the sherry the, influence. The darker fruits are so when you so when you prominent. do uh, uh say forty percent sherry, do you do you do it time wise? Like uh you first you barrel it in bourbon, then you barrel it in sherry, or do you do a marriage of cast? It's it's a marriage, it's a vatting. Um mm -hmm. they're, they're it's not a finish. Mm -hmm. um, we take a percentage of casks and a percentage of sherry casks, mm -hmm. and they are combined. Oh, I really like that. Mm. Strong on the sherry, but there's, there's something. There's some complexity I can't really dig through yet. Mm. Fades out quite nicely in the very round. Yeah, it's lovely. So, um, one question: uh, You have uh, you just been like a few years. You've been bought by another company. Um, does it have any effect on, let's say, products or production or anything at all? We uh, our ultimate ownership rests with a company called Distel, mm -hmm. who are based in South Africa, mm -hmm. but who are big players in the, the European market. Um, at this point in time, no, they're not um, having a huge influence on our products. Our products are still largely dictated by our master distiller, mm -hmm. who is responsible for ourselves and for our two sister distilleries at Tober Mori and at Deanston. Ah, okay. So, so they just provide the, the company background and have all the companies work together, but say, yeah, you do your product, Scotsman. That, that's, <laughs> effectively, that's that's the basis that we're working okay. on. Okay. Yeah. Well, nice way. Nice yeah. way to work. Good. Okay. So we're getting into the peated range now. Yes. Let's move on to the peated range. The first one that I'm going to pour for you has been really one of the the cornerstones of our peated range, and okay. uh, this is called. How did you pronounce it? This is called Tochuch. Tochuk. Tochuk, yeah. How, what does it mean? Tochuk is Gaelic, funnily enough. <laughs> and it is Gaelic for smoky. Smoky. And the emphasis here is on the smoky elements of the flavour. You'll see it's a much lighter colour. Mm -hmm. All bourbon cask. All bourbon cask. All bourbon cask. And although there's no age statement on the bottle, we're talking largely eight, nine year old whiskey as a, a minimum. Mm -hmm. And the idea really is, as I say, the emphasis being on the smoky aspects of the flavour. Uh, for, for, from my own point of view, if you're talking about the smokiness in a whiskey, it's the initial burst of the flavour. And for peatiness, if you're talking about the peatiness, again, I, I can only speak personally, but for me, the peatiness tends to be a lingering flavour, perhaps down the sides of the tongue. Mm -hmm. So quite sharp, quite active at the start. Mm -hmm. A bit. I'm not sure what it is. If it's maybe a bit of the alcohol. Are we looking at 46 again. 46 okay. exactly for this mm -hmm. one. 46 points. But there's a like a curve of of smoking you know, as you rises a bit, and now it's fading out, and mm -hmm. got a bit of different flavors in there. I'm not quite sure what it is. Maybe a bit of 
slight honey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, this is like, I don't know, I would estimate it at 20, 30, or how, how much ppm are we looking We're at? We're only talking 10 parts per million. 10 parts 10 per million. 10 parts per million. Well, strong but, ten. but it, uh, it punches above its weight. Mm hmm. Mm. We're only being 10 ppm. There's a, also, there's a good kick there. Also depends on, on how the how it's been distilled, how how hard the, the ppm is coming through. So mm -hmm. mm, mm, yeah. Great stuff. Great stuff. Yeah. Um yeah. So then and, and the last one is that different to this one? The, the last one's a little bit different. It's um it's similar in so much as we're still talking all bourbon cask whiskey. Mm -hmm. This is called Kyobanach and the Kyobanach joined our peated range just almost exactly a year ago and this is the first batch that I'm pouring although the second batch has just been released in the last week or so and this is as peaty as we do this is 35 parts per million and although again we have no age statement on the bottle mm -hmm. this is our first 10 year old peated whiskey from Bonahaven first time we've released a 10 year old peated oh okay same strength as our 12 and our 18, 46.3% proof. And much more typical of what people might expect from an Isla malt. If somebody was to say, what's an Isla malt whiskey going to be like? Immediately people think, it's going to be peaty and it's going to be smoky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And, and this is all these things. Mm -hmm. But it's made in the same way as our 12 and our 18. It's made in our big tall stills. And it's still a light, mellow spirit. It's not a heavy, oily spirit. It's still an easy drinking whiskey. Although you're getting the peat and you're getting the smoke. So what I get from there, it should be a bit older and a bit more uh, heavy it, on the wood? Or it's, 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 it's a, yeah, it's, it, it's quite a full dram. You know, there's, there's, a, there's a, a lot to it. Um, but it's not hard work at all. Mm -hmm. It's great for maturing whiskey in here, but it's still a bit cold. Uh, <laughs> yes. Mm. Mm. I would say it's a bit more intense than the other one. Yeah. Has a it's more lingering. It's mm -hmm. Got, mm, more of the, the wood flavours, mm -hmm. I would say. Mm. So can we expect um more of the PT range in the future? Or is that are there any plans? It's it's still comparatively the small part of what we do, mm -hmm. but we would be crazy not to provide to the yeah, I like it. So whiskey fans, and we do it well, so I think so. You'll, you'll see more and more of it. Okay, yeah, okay. we'll keep our eyes and, and uh, everything open to, to find it. Yeah. So, thank you very much for having us here on Isla. Absolute pleasure. And Thanks everybody for watching. If you found this video interesting and you have some friends who might also like to see this video, then please feel free to share this video with your friends. And thank you for watching.